it's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Howdy! Here we are with chapter 13, lesson number 2, looking at unit vectors. So to start this off, let's imagine we have a vector. We're going to call it vector v. This vector obviously has a length and it's got a direction. There is going to be another vector which is the same direction, but with a magnitude or a length of 1. And this is known as a unit vector. So if u is your unit vector and it has the components l, m and n, well your unit vector has a magnitude or a length of just 1. Thinking about that then, how do you get the magnitude of a vector? Well, taking it back, you would have the square root of l squared plus m squared plus n squared. And if it's a unit vector, it will then be equal to 1. Woo! If you square both sides, you will find that your l squared plus m squared plus n squared equals 1. Woo! So, if you take the components, if you square them and add them, then you will get 1 if it is going to be a unit vector. How can you get the components of a unit vector if you know the original vector? Well, if you know the length of the original vector, then you can divide that original vector by its length and you will find the components of the unit vector. Let's try some examples with that. So, find the components of the unit vector u parallel to vector v if vector v is 3, 4. So we're starting off then, we know vector v is 3, 4. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the length of that vector. How could we do that, Madiha? Brilliant. Well, you know the magnitude would be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. If you work that out, Madiha, you would end up with? Brilliant, you'd end up with 5 units. So we know the length then of vector v. If you're imagining it, you'd think of this wee diagram here. So vector v, say, is going to be 5 units long. If you want to find the components of the unit vector then, well, as I said in the last slide, you want to divide vector v by its length. So, you can say then that the unit vector will be a fifth of v. So, to work that out then, you can say that vector u is going to be equal to one fifth of three, four. And if you work that out then, well, a fifth of three is going to be three fifths, and a fifth of four will be four fifths. So, that will be your unit vector with the components. Next example, find two unit vectors this time parallel to A and A has the components 12, 3, 4. So for this one, well the first thing you need to do again if you're wanting the unit vector is you need to know the length of vector A. So to get that, what would you be doing Grace? Good, the exact same thing as the last page. The magnitude of A is going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. If you work that out then, you would have the square root of 144 add 9 add 16, which gives you the square root of 169, which gives you 13. Brilliant. So we know the length then of this vector A is going to be 13. We are looking for two unit vectors parallel to A. So to get that, well, what you want to do is you divide this vector A by its length. So you can say then that you would have a thirteenth of this vector A. But because we're looking for two unit vectors, well, the unit vectors, you could have one direction or you could be going in the opposite direction but keeping the vector parallel. So you can have the positive or the negative of and then divide each of these components by 13. So you've got 12 over 13. 3 over 13 or 4 over 13 and that is going to be both of the unit vectors, the plus or the minus. Let's try another one, example 3. u is equal to a one third and negative one third and that is a unit vector. Calculate the two possible values of a. So the first thing you want to think is, well because you're told it's a unit vector, you know the magnitude is going to be equal to one! Brilliant. So, you can say the magnitude of a is one, which means then that if you take the square root of a squared plus one third squared plus negative one third squared, that would be equal to one. If you square both sides, you can say that a squared plus, and that would become one ninth, that would also become one ninth. So a squared plus one ninth plus one ninth must be equal to one. From there, well a squared, if you have a ninth, add a ninth, that's two ninths. Take that off both sides. 
So a squared must be equal to 7 ninths. We are wanting the value of a though. So if we know a squared, what would you then do, Adam? Brilliant. Square root it. And what would you get? Good. The plus or the minus the square root of 7 ninths. Square root of 7, we just have to leave as root 7, but the square root of 9, we can write as 3, which means then we'd have positive or negative root 7 over 3. Let's try another one. Example 4 is 2 over 3, 1 over 3, negative 2 over 3, a unit vector. How do we know if it's a unit vector? What would we do, Matthew? Good, we want to work out the magnitude, and what would we get for the magnitude? Yes, we would get 1 if it is a unit vector. So here you're thinking the magnitude is the square root of the 2 thirds squared plus 1 third squared plus the negative 2 thirds squared, and we're looking for 1, except we can just forget the square root because we found in the first page that if you take these components, square them and add them, we are just looking to get 1. So let's do that. So if you take these components and square them, well, we'd have 2 thirds squared plus 1 third squared plus negative uh, 2 thirds squared. Work that out. 2 thirds squared, squared the 2, squared the 3, and we get 4 over 9. Squared the 1, squared the 3, and we get 1 ninth. And do the same thing for this. Squaring a negative makes it positive, so we'd add 4 over 9. If you add them, we've got 4 ninths plus 1 ninth, which is 5 ninths. Add on another 4 ninths, which will give us 9 ninths. And 9 ninths is the same as 1. Brilliant. So what does that mean then? Well, it means it's a unit vector because it's got a length of just one. Taking this a bit further then. So the unit vectors in the length, thinking about going along the x axis, the y axis and the z axis. So if we go along the x axis, one unit, well, that is a unit vector. So it's got the components 1, 0, 0, because we're just going along one unit in the x. That is known as i. Vector j is the same, but it's going to be going along the y-axis. So we're going along 0 in x, we're going along 1 unit in y, and up 0 in z. So we've only gone along 1 unit in the y-axis, and that is referred to as vector j. And vector k is when you don't go along the x, you don't go along the y, but you're just going straight up on your z-axis, you're going up one unit. So with these are known as vector units, but they're going to be in the direction of the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And what you've got to do with them is you can represent any vector using a combination of its components. So... For example, if you have this diagram here with vector v drawn in with this purple line, for that we came along three units in the x, going back four units in the y, and then going up two units in z. So really you could say then that this vector v would be 3, 4, 2, because you're going along 3, you're going along 4, and then you're going up 2. But if you write that in terms of these unit vectors i, j, and k, you can say that vector v would equal 3i, because you're going along 3 units in x. It's 4j plus 4j, because you're going along 4 units in the y-axis, and then plus 2k, because you're going up 2 units in the z-axis. So the vectors i, j, and k are ones that you need to be familiar with. For example, express each vector in component form. So let's say we've got vector v, which is 4i, take away 8j, plus 3k. Well, if you write that in component form, then vector v would equal, remember the components are where you're going to have your brackets and you're going to have your numbers in here. So you can say then that you would have 4 for the x, negative 8 for the y, and 3 for z. So that would be the vector in component form. The same thing with b, c. So here we're looking at the coefficients really of i, j, and k. But with i, well, we have no i's. We cannot see that. So we'd have 0, because there's 0 i. For j, you would have 7. And for k, you've got negative 2. So you would have a negative 2 for your z value there. So that would be these vectors written in component form. Going back the way, express each vector in the form of i, j, and k. So let's say we've got vector r, which has the components 2, 5, negative 1. Well, you could also write that in the terms of i, j, and k. So you can say you've got 2i, 2 units in the x-axis. You would say you've got 5y, 
uh, 5j, so plus 5 units in the y-axis, and then the negative 1 means you would be going down 1 unit in z, so it would be minus 1k, or just minus k. Do the same thing for g and h, so the vector gh. For that one, we would have negative 2i. We've got 0j, so you don't need to write that, and we would have the plus 5k. And that would be these vectors in the form of i, j, and k. Final example, the vector a has the components negative 3, 0, 4. Find the unit vector u, which is parallel to vector a, writing your answer in the form of i, j, and k. So the first thing we need to do if we're wanting to find the unit vector, well, we need to know the length of this vector a. How then, Andrew, would we get the length of this vector? Good, you think about the magnitude. So the magnitude of a is going to be equal to the square root of negative 3 squared plus 0 squared plus 4 squared. If you work that out, it's going to give you the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which gives you 5. So we know this vector then has a length of 5. If we think then, how do we get the unit vector? What would we do? Good, we want to divide that vector by, divide each of the components by the length. So you can say then that the unit vector would have the components. It's negative 3 over 5, 0 over 5, which is just 0, and then 4 over 5. We are asked to write it though in the form of i, j, and k. So all you want to do is take each of these components and we would have negative 3 fifths i. We've got 0 uh, j, so we don't need to write that, and we would have 4 fifths k. So that would be your vector in the form of i, j, and k. Give these questions a shot. There are loads of them, an awful lot. Try some of these, see how you get on. Good luck. Any problems, let me know. Unit vectors. Woo! Bye. Bye-bye.